The Second Taiwan Strait Crisis, also called the 1958 Taiwan Strait Crisis, was a conflict that took place between the People's Republic of China (PRC) and the Republic of China (ROC), in which the PRC shelled the islands of Kinmen and the nearby Matsu Islands along the east coast of the PRC in the Taiwan Strait to liberate Taiwan from the Chinese Nationalist Party, also called Kuomintang (KMT), and probe the extent of the United States' defense of Taiwan's territory. Overview The crisis started with the 823 artillery bombardment Chinese, Ba Er San Pao Zan Pinyin, Bar San Pao Zan, Pei, Hog, Pat G Sam Fao Qian at 5.30 p.m. on 23 August 1958, when the PRC's People's Liberation Army PLA began an intense artillery bombardment against Kamoi Kinmen. The ROC troops on Kinmen dug in and then returned fire. In the heavy exchange of fire, roughly 440 ROC soldiers and 460 PRC soldiers were killed. This conflict was a continuation of the first Taiwan Strait Crisis, which had begun immediately after the Korean War ended. The nationalist Chinese had begun to build on the island of Kinmen and the nearby Matsu archipelago. During 1954, the PLA began firing artillery at both Kinmen and some of the nearby Matsu Islands. The American Eisenhower administration responded to the request for aid from the ROC according to its obligations in the Mutual Defense Treaty that had been ratified in 1954. President Dwight D. Eisenhower ordered the reinforcement of the U.S. Navy 7th Fleet in the area, and he ordered American naval vessels to help the nationalist Chinese government to protect the supply lines to the islands. In addition, the U.S. Air Force deployed F-100D Super Sabres, F-101C Voodoos, F-104A Starfighters, and B-57B Canberras to Taiwan to demonstrate support for the Republic. The F-104s were disassembled and airlifted to Taiwan in C-124 Globemaster II transport aircraft, the first time such a method was used to move fighter aircraft over a long distance. Also, under a secret effort called Operation Black Magic. The U.S. Navy modified some of the F-86 Sabre fighters of the Nationalist Chinese Air Force with its newly developed AIM-9 Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles early models. These missiles gave the Nationalist Chinese pilots a decisive edge over the Soviet-made MiG-15 and MiG-17 fighters in the skies over the Matsu Islands and the Taiwan Strait. The Nationalist Chinese pilots used the Sidewinder missiles to score numerous kills on PLOF MiG aircraft. The U.S. Army's contribution was to reinforce the strategic air defense capability of the nationalist China. A provisional Nike battalion was organized at Fort Bliss, TX, and sent via USMTS USS General J.C. Breckinridge AP-176 to nationalist China. The second missile battalion was augmented with detachments of signal, ordnance and engineers, totaling some 704 personnel. 12 long-range 203mm M115 howitzer artillery pieces and numerous 155mm howitzers were transferred from the U.S. Marine Corps to the Army of the Nationalist China. These were sent west to Kinmen Island to gain superiority in the artillery duel back and forth over the straits there. The impact of these powerful but conventional artillery pieces led some members of the PLA to believe that American artillerymen had begun to use nuclear weapons against them. Soon, the Soviet Union dispatched its foreign minister, Andrei Gromyko, to Beijing to discuss the actions of the PLA and the Communist Chinese Air Force PLOF, with advice of caution to the Communist Chinese. On the 22nd of September 1958, the Sidewinder missile was used for the first time in air-to-air -air combat as 32 nationalist Chinese F-86s clashed with 100 Communist Chinese PLOF MiGs in a series of aerial engagements. Numerous MiGs were shot down by sidewinders, the first kills to be scored by air-to-air -air missiles in combat. Soon, the Communist China was faced with a stalemate, the PLA's artillerymen had run out of artillery shells. The Communist Chinese government announced a large decrease in bombardment levels on October 6. Topic aftermath Afterwards, both sides continued to bombard each other with shells containing propaganda leaflets on alternate days of the week. This strange informal arrangement continued until the normalization of diplomatic relations between the United States and the Communist China in 1979. The time shelling eventually created little damage and casualties, it was mainly aimed at military compounds and artillery pieces. 
It was also a way to expend expired ammunition and train new artillery crews for the Communist China in what eventually became one-way shelling from Communist China to Nationalist China. The question of Matsu and Kamoi Kinman became an issue in the 1960 U.S. presidential election when Richard Nixon accused John F. Kennedy of being unwilling to commit to using nuclear weapons if the Communist China invaded the Nationalist China outposts. The spent shell casings and fragments have become a recyclable resource for steel for the local economy. Since the Second Taiwan Strait Crisis, Kinmen has become famous for its production of meat cleavers made from bombshells. Topic see also First Taiwan Strait Crisis Third Taiwan Strait Crisis List of battles over Kinmen Chinese Civil War Republic of China Armed Forces Kinmen Knife Topic Further reading Bush, R. and O'Hanlon, M. 2007. A War Like No Other, The Truth About China's Challenge to America. Wiley. ISBN 0-471-98677-1 Bush, R. 2006. Untying the Knot, Making Peace in the Taiwan Strait. Brookings Institution Press. ISBN 0-8157-1290-1 Carpenter, T. 2006. America's Coming War with China, A Collision Course Over Taiwan. Palgrave Macmillan. ISBN 1-4039-6841-1 Cole, B. 2006. Taiwan's Security, History and Prospects. Routledge. ISBN 0-415-36581-3 Copper, J. 2006. Playing with Fire, The Looming War with China over Taiwan. Prager Security International General Interest. ISBN 0-275-98888-0 Federation of American Scientists et al., 2006. Chinese Nuclear Forces and U.S. Nuclear War Planning Gill, B. 2007. Rising Star, China's New Security Diplomacy. Brookings Institution Press. ISBN 0-8157-3146-9 Shirk, S. 2007. China, Fragile Superpower, How China's Internal Politics Could Derail Its Peaceful Rise. Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-530609-0 Sang, S. 2006. If China Attacks Taiwan, Military Strategy, Politics and Economics. Routledge. ISBN 0-415-40785-0 Tucker, N. B. 2005. Dangerous Strait, The U.S.-Taiwan-China Crisis. Columbia University Press. ISBN 0-231-13564-5 Watry, David M. Diplomacy at the Brink, Eisenhower, Churchill, and Eden in the Cold War. Baton Rouge, Louisiana State University Press, 2014. References Citations Topic. Sources Chen Jian, 2001. Mao's China and the Cold War, Beijing and the Taiwan Strait Crisis of 1958. The University of North Carolina Press http colon slash slash www.generals.dk slash general slash chu underscore ching dash quan slash underscore slash china dot html Ministry of National Defense ROC 1 US Naval War College https colon slash slash web dot archive dot org slash web slash two oh oh nine oh three two six oh one one eight two four slash http colon slash slash cgsc dot leavenworth dot army dot mil slash carl slash download slash chiphub slash bjorg underscore y dot pdf topic external links http colon slash slash www.globalsecurity.org slash military slash ops slash kamoi underscore matsu dash two htm mao zedong's handling of the taiwan straits crisis of 1958 khrushchev's nuclear promise to beijing during the 1958 crisis first and second taiwan strait crisis kamoi and matsu islands of taiwan from the cold war museum the communist threat in the taiwan area contemporary u.s government reaction youtube taiwan after ww2 u.s army and republic of china army prepare for war with china documentary